Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're focusing on education as a tool to change the state of our nation. And please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8034 right, so um, thank you so much, Taiwa Klemi, for staying with us. So you, before we went on a break, you were talking about citizenship. You were talking about where we go from here. Because it seems the picture you're painting seems really, really scary for me. Why I say so is, um, okay, if we were even at the state where we were before, in terms of our educational system and all of that, I'll say, yes, we're doing fantastic. But it seems like with every single day, we are retrogressing. It's, an, it's like we are moving backwards when it comes to our education, our educational structure. And right now, it looks like, you know, the private schools and the, what's it called, private universities, private institutions, rather, you know, yeah, they are doing a fantastic job, but even at that, if you go to really check what is happening, you cannot be at the same level with your counterparts in other parts of the world. And if we know that this education that we, talk, we were talking about is a big tool in terms of developing any nation, because, I mean, if I am equipped, what you talked about, soft skills and all of that, if I have those... Um, those uh, level of um, skills and all of that, of course, definitely, there is no way my immediate environment will not be impacted positively, you know, towards uh, progressive growth. So where do we move from, you know, in all of this? How do we even okay. start from? Okay. Now, the, the, going forward, uh, we need to understand that when we also talk about education, it is important to define what education are we talking about. Nigeria does British curriculum. A lot of private schools in Lagos does British curriculum. But if you go to Finland, the Ministry of Education in Finland is called the Ministry of Education and Culture. Education becomes a vehicle to communicate a culture of a people, which is peculiar. Now, it's from custom to culture. Now, now so when you now teach Nigerian children British curriculum, what you are saying, uh, and the, who is the person teaching the British curriculum? A Nigerian, who most of the time has never even been to Britain. And a Nigerian who lives in Ajegunle, but teaches in a school in VI, because uh, Ajegunle, uh, uh, or teaches in a school in Apapa. So that is the person who does not understand the culture and trying to communicate British curriculum. That's number one. Number two is the fact that all these private schools that you are looking at, is it not the government mm -hmm. that, that, that destroyed their own public schools? Because you see, government play two roles in education in Nigeria. Government, government, establishes school, government also regulates. So the government that could not, the advent of private schools and private university, it is the destruction of the public schools. Public schools faded. That is why we now began to have advent private of schools. private schools, so that private school became an alternative. In a country like Rwanda, Rwanda there, in a country like, I don't want to talk about developed countries, in those countries, Private education is not a substitute to public education. Everybody who could be accommodated in the public schools are accommodated in the public school. But those who are looking for luxury, those who are looking for and then some treatment are the ones who go to private school. But the way private school operates in Nigeria is that you have grade A private school, grade B, grade C, grade D. You have private school that are paying 20 naira per day with lunch in Ajegule. It is it, pay as you go. You have all of those private schools. So this is the problem. This same government that could not run their own school, they are the one regulating private schools. They are the one regulating universities. Now, this same university you are talking about now, is it not in one university that a child has been, a 17 year old has been raped now? Yes. In, in, 20, in 2019, I was working with UNICEF. We were developing a child protection policy for the entire country. And in that meeting, I made it clear to UNICEF and Minister of Education and University, uh, uh, National University Commission. I said, look, how come you don't have child protection policy in universities? They were saying university is an adult. I said, no. People from 16, people from 15 enter university today. They are children. Have you thought about safer recruitment for universities? Have you thought about uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, child protection policy for universities? Because children are not in the university. It's not if I went to university at the age of 20. People are not going to university at the age of 15. The system is still the same. That because teacher, it's that, even wrong. Mr. Akila, it's I, even I, wrong for you to allow a child to even go into the university at, the, at that age. It is illegal. <laughs> if I may step well, in. Jam says, Jam says you can come to the university at the age of... According to the law that set up Jam, Jam says you can come to the university at the age of 16. 
Mm. But now, you know, this, this is a country where we make regulations and there are no protocols and processes to enforce those regulations. So on the basis of that, you have a lot of people in the university who are not supposed to be there. They are 15 year old. And what universities have also done is to start what they call pre-degree courses. Yes. With these pre-degree courses, these pre-degree courses are not under the purview, under the, the uh, control of, of JAM. So what happens is that they admit children at 14, 12, and all of that to go to the university. So that is a symposium discussion for another day. But what I think, uh, going forward, because I know we don't have too much time anymore, going forward, I think that the Nigerian system needs a total overhauling, a total overhauling from education to health and all of that. If I may I step in there, the if I may step in there, I want to ask you this question, basically, okay? okay. We have formal education and we have informal education, correct? Yes. But the yes. um, formal education is when we go to school, the four walls of yes. um, and university or wherever. But the key thing mm. here is informal education. Do you think that we mm. in Nigeria, we have actually neglected the informal structure? And secondly, how do, how, how do we you know, revamp the informal structure if we have actually um, um, neglected okay. it and another thing okay. is another thing is technology technology you you have done something about technology earlier and mm. technology plays a huge role in nation building we all know that that's the future so how mm. do we actually harness this part in education okay. in nigeria technology, formally technology and informally the, technology is the present it's no more the future mm. technology is the present right now with the advent of COVID, you know, uh, uh, the situ like Mr. Lakleshon would say, complexity has been intensified with the advent of COVID. So we need to understand that. Now, when you talk about formal and informal education, where I come from, there's a Yoruba proverb that says, that is, somebody has not, a human being, full fledged human being, has not found a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. Then a dog is snoring, is sleeping and snoring. Those who have even gone to school, who have acquired so-called formal education, where are they in the system? So when you talk about informal education, we need to define what that informal education means. What does it mean? And how does it help the people? Now, we need to define also uh, uh, that vis-a-vis -vis even the language with which you communicate education. Mm. You know, Professor Bafafunwa did something, I think many years ago, where he got people to teach, to teach physics, chemistry, and all of those, got them to teach all of those things in Yoruba, and those children were able to do well. Now, all that was an experiment that was not carried forward. So when you look at all of these things, again, when you talk about informal education, where can you go in Nigeria? As if you are informally educated in Igbo, in Ibibio, in Yoruba, where can you go in Nigeria without being able to speak English? That is an argument that Mr. Lakulation has advanced many years ago. <laughs> where English language becomes a determinant factor of your progress in your own country. Mm -hmm. We've not addressed all of that. The Chinese man learns, learns <coughs> physics, chemistry, technology in Chinese. Chinese. The mm. German man learns Mandarin. English, technology, all of that in German. In, in the Nigerian man learns, <laughs> learns all of these things in foreign language, a language that he, still, he or she is still trying to grapple with. We are dealing with a hydrated problem. There needs to be a national a restructuring. There is to be a former, a, 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 a national, uh, uh, I, I don't want to discuss the issue of education away from the issue of Nigeria. Mm. Is it because it's interwoven. education, mm -hmm. our education is a reflection of who we are as a nation until the foundation of Nigeria is revis revisited, either by way of, um, by way of a restructuring or by way of peaceful revolution or by any means necessary, any peaceful means necessary, until we go back to the basis, we go back to the root to sit down and discuss the basis of this union and go further from there. I don't think we're going to do too much. In the interim, we need to continue to have conversations like this. We that we are educated, so to say, we that so we know to better, say, oh. so to say, so to say, we need to begin to make, we need to begin to educate our own area of influence for okay. them to understand what the issues are. We need to be able to begin to aid as many children as we can aid to get this form of education. We need to see what we can do to pull people out of poverty and, and help them with their education. Because if you say there are 13.5 million children out of school, the question is how many of them 
So you need to bring them down to the 36 states of the federation. Mm -hmm. How many children per state? Now, how many schools do we need to build? Mm -hmm. how, many, how many teachers do we need to hire? If well, you cannot build schools, how many tasks do we need to get? I need to, you know what, let's step in. No, 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 you can't step in there. We need to bring in our audience. <laughs> One minute, please. Thank you, Isi, for the question. I want to see a Nigeria treating informal learning as important as formal. Let us have proper informal structured system. We, ha we have needs in our economy, e.g. construction. Let's have a system where you can learn right from say two to three years. That's Lola from Lagos. Localizing that's education. That's technical education. That's technical that's education. Technical education. Mm. Yeah. It's localizing. Technical. Localizing. Yet yeah, localizing education in simple terms. Um, that's Haruna from Zaria. Um, somebody says, have have anyone tried to engage non-academic staff? You just feel so sad. That's Henry from Bagada. And um, mm. Isi and Mori Ma take yours. Then Isi will take hers. Okay. The mind is where the battle is first won, but it needs oil or grace, and that oil or grace is education. And that's one day, I'm guessing from Lagos, because there's no... The educational system in Nigeria suffered a major drawback as a result of deliberate neglect of public schools by the allies. No nation advanced beyond the level of its educational attainment citizens and that is Rafael Akori from Zaria. I hope I got the name right. Yeah, Rafael Akori, yes. Go okay. ahead. Um, so first, uh, let me just say that I believe education is functionality. We should be able to function in the society. That's very, very important. Go ahead. So secondly, um, this is from, uh, the name isn't written, it's uh, from uh, Canada. He says or she says, education as a tool is a tricky subject. First, what is education in this context? Is formal education going to school or a tool in the right direction? Mm -hmm. And the second one is from Ahmed. Ahmed says, please tell people to just get data on their phones. With YouTube, <laughs> a lot can be learned for free. Let us just stop focusing on certification but gaining skills. skills. I believe skills is the way right. to go. So as technology well. is you. hidden in language and that's what we need to internalize in Africa to process, sorry, to progress to a sustainable society. Yeah. Um, the same person from Canada, but you didn't put your name. Mori, you have one final comment and I'll come to Taiwa Kilami to help us wrap up this. Okay, I honestly just know, you know, I've heard, I've heard the things that Mr. Taiwa Akinami has been saying that we need to do, you know, but just in, in plain honesty and in yes or no answer. Is it actually something that we can do? Is it actually, you know, it's one thing to say, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do, but are these things actually feasible? Achievable, you know, that, yeah. Or are we just hoping? Hmm. Taiwa, are, are That's you my there? question. To like... Am I to respond? Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes you have to. Well, uh, I said, well, uh, look, um, <laughs> there are two things involved. Number one, we need to change Nigeria. That is a tall order. That is a tall order. Um, whether that is going to happen in a jiffy, is a symposium discussion for another day. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, so we need to change Nigeria. We need to be committed to that because you cannot change one thing. You, you, you want to change one thing in the, if the foundation is faulty, what shall the righteous do? Mm -hmm. We need to address the foundation. But what I'm now saying, while we are waiting to affect the foundation, which is critical, what can we begin to do as individuals? What what organizations can we establish? What NGO can we work with? If there are, so I said before the break uh, uh, that if there are 13.5 million Nigerian children out of school in Nigeria, let's break them down to states. If we break them down to states, how many of them, how many of these people, uh, what do they need? Do they need four walls? Do they need to go to the four walls of a, of a school? Mm -hmm. uh, do they need to, uh, uh, do we need to get tablet for them? Do we need to engage in community education? How many of these people can we bring out of, um, out of the neglect of education and the rest of that? Now, that is critical. We need to begin to think about personal efforts at our own level. What can we do? But most importantly, the ultimate solution is that the Nigerian state needs to be, needs to be dismantled, needs to be reorganized, whether by way of a restructuring national conference 
or constitutional conference, which I think we have had that in the past, or by way of a peaceful revolution, which just means turn around, to turn around the entire state of the country, reintroduce ourselves to ourselves, ask critical questions about our continued existence, and all of that. We need to ask that question. Thank followership you. also needs to become responsible, because more important is followership, because it is from the followers that the leaders emerge. So it is important that as we are looking at ourselves, we are, as we are looking at the nation, and we are looking at the leaders, we are also looking at ourselves. Because it is out of us that the people who we call today's leaders are produced. Thank you so much, Taiwo. Um, so, Mori, you have one final comment with you. So, if I. No, 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 it. I already read. I already read. No, no, no there's one. Um, okay, let me just take it. Well done, ladies. I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, for our education sector to be reviewed, the solution is very simple. Let it be made mandatory that the children of all the people in government should go to public schools from primary to university level. Their children must not go to any private school or travel abroad. That's um, Temilola Ogedengbe from Lagos. Uh, we've had this conversation before. <laughs> but the people, that were, the people that will create those laws, their children are abroad. So I don't even know how it's going to happen. But Taiwa Kilami, thank you so much for a fantastic it's time. It's happened by our agitation. Well, by our, by our yes, by our, by our yes, by our peaceful revolution, peaceful revolution, it yes. will happen by that. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Taiwa Kilami, for your time. It's been an amazing time talking to you. All right, so uh, quickly, so in much, one God. word, Mori, what do you think? In one second, uh, you see, one second. Let me just give you guys one, one okay. second each. Mori, are you wait, there? Wait, 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 what, who's going first? Who's going first and what do I think about what is <laughs> No, what do you think? Do you, I mean, I loved your, your question about, do you think it's possible? So mm -hmm. after all Taiwo Aklemi has said, do you think mm. it's going to be possible? And wait, wait, what's well, our role? Like be, I feel like it's going to be possible if the citizens, if we decide to come together without mm. the intervention of the government. Because those people, they don't, first of all, they don't rate us. Second mm. of all, they don't care about us. So if it's left to them, we're going to be drones in for till forever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we decide to take matters into our own hands, you know, and be serious with it, then perhaps, you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Anything absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Easy, quickly. I think it's time for, um, for us to have a, a total overhaul of the curriculum. Mm. That's number one. And number two is for us to understand what the people actually need. Mm. For us to create functional individuals in the society that will help us build a nation that will you know thrive absolutely so we have refineries we have bitumen that is on untapped we have mm -hmm. so many things so why don't we start to churn out graduates that will just move into those sectors that needs that need the help but i would say to parents out there i mean we cannot wait for the government while the government is trying totally. to get themselves together Try. I love what somebody said about getting your phones. You know, truly there are resources out YouTube. there. The yes. truth is that we also need to silently be educating ourselves. Exactly. While they are trying to get their acts together, let us be educating ourselves so that when we are ready for that peaceful revolution, we will make it happen. Thank you again, ladies. Thank you, Mori. Thank you, Isi. Thank you to our guest, Taiwa Kilami, for I mean for an amazing conversation. So ways was birth from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. Taiwaki, let me say, some people are unemployable, and I believe him. <laughs> so if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote again, I mean, he mentioned something about proper education. So this quote is very apt. The main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth so erasmus said that we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen enjoy